How much money do you make if you buy altcoins on the Bitcoin halvening and then you hold them to the top? This is your friend, Sammy. I'm wearing a Squirtle hat and I actually went and I found out the answer. And what I've done is I've categorized each of the results by having the whole index, large caps, okay, the second piece, and the third piece is just pure altcoins, which is others index, okay? And I'm gonna start with the biggest number, okay? So the number's actually diminishing, friends. In the first cycle, all right, you got a 326X. Now, we can't really count the first Bitcoin cycle because Bitcoin was the altcoin, pretty much, okay? So you got 326X, this was in the year 2016, and then four years later, Remember, you buy altcoins on the Bitcoin halvening. It's not 326x anymore. It's only 25x. All right, that's pure altcoins. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go through all the data. I'm just going to show you how these all think work. But the whole index, by the way, remember how it was 326x for the first one? And then it went to like 26x? Well, you know, in last cycle, friends, if you, you have a portfolio of the whole index, the whole crypto, that's Bitcoin, Ethereum, and altcoins, you include everything, you only make 11x. Only 11. All right, and you might say, oh, 11's a lot of money. No, 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 no. That's you imaginarily selling the top, which no one's able to do. So your portfolio goes 11x, and then by the time you realize it's a bear market, because it's the total crypto index, you're down 65%. Because what? how'd you get 65%? Bitcoin drops 50, your altcoins drop 75. What's the middle number? It's around 65%. So from today, this was, this was last cycle, man. They had friends, they had infinite QE, 0% interest rates, Dogecoin mania, El Salvador buys Bitcoin, all of this stuff. You only make 11. But this is the thing, man. You don't sell at 11. So actually, you don't actually make 11. By the time you realize it's all over, you're up about a 5x. And remember, we're diminishing over time. So I'm just going to show you it now. I'm not here to... It's not like any fear porn or anything, friends. The only porn you should be watching is me wearing a Squirtle hat. But I'm just letting you know, okay? First, we are friends, and we're going to just confirm some friendship with the pump music. Because, I mean, we're lucky this stuff even works in the first place. But I'm just going to let you know that it's very, very obvious, man. I'm going to show you that you see it, right? You see, you feel it. We are diminishing, okay? So what actually do we explore, okay? So we just had the Bitcoin halvening, okay? And I've plot the data to show how much you get in altcoins if you buy altcoins on that halvening event. So April of this year, we just had the Bitcoin halvening. And I'm now, what I did was I marked it by a vertical line here. See these vertical dots, these vertical lines. So this is 2016 cycle. So if you bought on that Bitcoin halvening to the top friends, right? You make 326X, whoa. Yeah, man. <laughs> that was a, that was like crypto. I wasn't around back then, but congratulations to everyone who was. Apparently, no one took profit then, so it is what it is. Okay. What happened in 2020 though? All right, the Bitcoin halvening was now in May of 2020, and you make 25x. Okay, remember this is pure altcoins, pure. So that means you don't have Bitcoin, you don't have Ethereum you went down the risk curve. You went to the riskiest stuff. Okay, so that's why you include stuff. So how come you got like a big whopping 25X there? It's because Matic goes 180X. Doge, uh, actually no, Doge was in the top 10 maybe, or maybe it wasn't, I forgot what it was, but you had stuff like that moving. You had Shib appearing, you had Mana, Sand, they do like 200X, 400X, you have Luna. Luna does... It does 800x from the bottom, but probably from the halvening itself, maybe it only does like a 400x or a 200x, okay? You get to see, so these numbers are stacked on one side, and then you only have pretty much uh, the Bitcoin stuff and Ethereum, which is only moving like, you know, basically like a 5 to an 8, okay? So it's a big difference, right? Big, big, big difference. But even then, you 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 don't know which one's going to be the winner. Someone's going to have the winners, Okay, it's like hitting a feature on a, on a, on a lottery ticket, okay? Um, so remember again, altcoin, pure altcoins, they are the others index, the riskiest part of the curve. And 
All right, so this is the numbers here, right? So that 2016 gave you 326, and then you only got 25 after. What's it going to be in the next one? Well, man, I mean, like, if you divide it by 10 again, I mean, we get nothing, pretty much. It's going to be dog crap, nothing. That's why I hope it doesn't work like that, because, man, we, we diminish friends. I can't tell you how bad we've been diminishing. I'm just going to be honest with you, okay? I'm here to give it to you straight. That's why, well, how do you think everybody got trapped last cycle, man? What, you think um, that... They were happy to hold through all those top signals? No. They were holding because <clears throat> not all the coins rallied. You think they rallied? They didn't rally. They didn't rally for shit. Okay? For the risk you were taking, that's not a rally. What, 5x after going down 90%, 95% with zombie virus and all this? Right? And then you have to sell at that point. If you don't sell at that point, you're down 70% from that. You're only up like a double. That's exactly what happened to Litecoin, by the way. Oh, you don't sell exactly right before trying to ban Bitcoin. You're only up a two to three X. And that's exact that's exactly what the chart said, man. Like to Yeah, this is pretty much what what happened, okay? Now that's pure altcoins. That's the sexiest part. So as you can see, what I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the data now. You guys to see that, okay, it's diminishing. And even the diminishing, right, the numbers starting to suck, even with it when it's the purest, purest altcoins, pure altcoins, which is others index. Now, what I'm going to show you is, all right, so we have that diminishing factor, right? Um, by the way, if we do that diminishing factor again, it suggests we're going to do like a 3.5x from today, right? Which that, I hope that doesn't happen, man. That'll be a disaster. Okay. Remember, I've taken the arbitrary point of the Bitcoin halvening, you know? So like, did were we running ahead of the Bitcoin halvening? Are we starting from a higher point? But really, it doesn't really matter where you start. You get the same picture. They all say the same thing. All right? They all say the same thing, that we're diminishing. Okay. Now, I was then curious, right? I was curious, so I played some nice gentle angel music. And I wanted to find out how much do the returns slow down if you include Ethereum now? All right. So total two, it's not just pure the altcoins outside of the top 10. Okay. It's not just them anymore. Um, now I wanted to include Ethereum and the top 10 altcoins. But by the way, so this is obviously just the top 10. I mean, so right now, in, outside of the top 10, you start with Corridanzo. Corridanzo, Tron, Avalanche, Polkadot, Chainic. That's basically outside of the top 10, okay? But this is obviously, it's a changing index over time. And that's what you really got to be careful of, friends, because um, Hex is the best example. Uh, the total crypto market cap is back to 2 trillion now, but Hex does not have 45 billion market cap. It, it's missing 45 billion market cap. Where did that money go? Well, it went into meme coins. It went into AI coins. It went into other sectors. So the market redistributed where its product market fit believes it should be. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind for the next cycle. So the industry can come back, even though altcoins come back and stuff, but which altcoins? That's why it's, it, it's very, very risky to gamble on that, right? Um Obviously, we're not in the risky part now because there's so much uncertainty um, and no one knows, oh, we're going to make it. That's obviously, that's a good part. The, the risky part is when everybody's euphoric. Okay, so look what happens when you include Ethereum and altcoins, friends. The returns, right, they used to be 326x back in 2016. It drops down to 160. And then in 2020, it's no longer 25x. It drops to 18 so, and by the way, that's a very generous move as well. But you can really start to see, like, when you start to get the heavier stuff, right, you basically starting to get crushed. So what's heavier stuff? It's just, like you said, stuff in the top 100. What is anything in the top 100, friends? If I go to rank 100, it is a coin with 750 million market cap, okay? So anything with over 100, 750 million market cap, you're pretty much a big cap, okay, in crypto. Okay. So, yeah, man, we're all just tickers trading around. It is what it is, okay? Now, it's tough, friends. It's tough because you, you have coins that like will like be the unicorn winner of one and it it makes everyone think they're going to pick it again. Like Axies, Infinity, that does a thousand X and all these other stuff. Well, man, your chances of getting them, they're so low. It's a, don't even like beat yourself up. It's so random, man. It's literally so random. The people who hear about them, like, oh, I read some magazine and some guy's in crypto and I play Street Fighter with him. So he told me to buy this coin because his friend's on the dev team or something. That's just the most random stories here. That's how people actually bink most of this stuff, okay? So you got to remember something about that. When you start to include Ethereum in the altcoins as well into the, the previous cycle, okay? 
Ethereum friends, I made videos on this too. Remember Ethereum in, in 2016, it was cycle one. All right, it was the unicorn birth. In 2020, it's cycle two, which is still good. But now, <clears throat> man, it hurts. We're in cycle number three for Ethereum. So what does that mean? It means the euphoric premium pricing, the excess pricing of your asset is not as like um, dangerously moonshot as it was before. Pretty much the market is learning how to price your thing. It knows not to deviate it too much. People know what the ETH BTC ratio is. They know how the yield works. They know about the PE ratio. They know Ethereum. The, the people learning what, what a validator is. They're learning, oh, are you decentralized? Like people can just bridge on over. There's other layer two chains, okay? There's chinks in the armor now. It's not as magical, all right? No one knew what the hell was going on four years ago. No one. What's a validator? I don't know. Like you could read about it. You still don't get it. Now people are learning, you know? Remember, Bitcoin had a third cycle curse as well in 2021. Never hit 100K, okay? Big, big, big letdown. Big letdown. Double top. Disgusting chart. See? Bitcoin had a third cycle curse. You saw it happen. So you're seeing as you start to introduce, right, the coins. Remember, man, we started off with like uh, this big 326x move in one cycle. Then you move down to 160. So your returns are going to drop as you get the safer stuff. Now, what I decided to do was I even went a step further. And I'm like saying, okay, remember we started with pure altcoins. Then I wanted to include Ethereum and the top tenors. Now, give me just the total index. So now we include Bitcoin with it as well. And you know that 320X, man, you're down now to 75, all right? And in 2020, you don't even get your 25X. You're down to a crappy 11. And that really sucks, by the way. Really, really sucks, okay? Because your 11X, you're like, oh, 11X. Remember what I told you, friends, what I told you, okay? Your 11X... You're not selling at 11x, man. All right. You're selling at five, four to five. Because by the time it confirms it's done, that's when it comes back down. Okay. So that's like, are you happy if your portfolio, by the way, today goes a four to five X? Because here's the thing, right? Most people don't outperform Bitcoin. And by the time their coin kind of like shows them that the trend is over, they're around that median price I gave you, around five X from today. Could you retire off 5X from today? I'm just asking you that. Just a general question. It's something to think about. Um, now, if you... So the, the diminishing gains, right? They've been dividing by seven. Uh, if we divide by seven again, we only get like a 1.5 excess return here. And that's actually visualized here on this chart, friends. You see that? So as you can see, right? It did a 75 banger for the whole industry. Then it did an 11 banger from here to here. Now, what are we going to do? I mean, like, even if, friends, this is the thing, right? we're at 2 trillion, okay? If we get to, like, freaking 12 trillion, that's, that's just a 6x, friends, from today, okay? Six. That's why I'm asking you, man. Um, like, like, maybe you go 10, and then it comes back down 50%, but it's like it's over. You know what I mean? Is that enough to retire? Just, just something to think about. Uh. It would be nice, though, you know, if your exact retirement point is exactly 10x and you could get out. That'd be nice. Uh, but what can we learn from all that? this data and evidence, right? So you can see the biggest returns, and it's not even close, come from pure altcoins after the Bitcoin halvening. I've been waiting for this moment since the bear market started. Literally, I've been waiting for this day, for this very day, for this Bitcoin halvening. Because I've known the data. The thing is, though, I did not know that the market was going to play out the four-year cycle exactly to the T. We had no idea that was going to happen, okay? Absolutely no idea. So as we go on our journey, friends, and I know you want to uh, be on the Pikachu journey with me. You really got to remember, right? How much is it worth risking of missing out because what if the four year cycle didn't repeat exactly the same? What if there's so many like people out there who are poor and bored that they start to price these things earlier and you don't get your nice big return? What if we were like 5X higher than today? You can't get in. You've pretty much destroyed yourself, all right? Now, it just so happens that the four year cycle repeated exactly to the T, something we would have never predicted, all right? 
You don't know that. Or even if you were to guess it, you're like, oh man, is it worth, is it really worth waiting and doing nothing for two years? What if, what if, man, like, see what I mean? What if? All right. Now, also a lot of people think about it. Some people pick Soylana, so they got it right. So they missed out on big life changing gains, but they're probably not going to take profit in the way that they should. But just showing you, right? It's it's, it's one thing to say, oh, it's going to repeat again. I'll sit on the sidelines for two years, okay? Like in the next cycle, man, now that everyone knows about it, we're like five cycles deep. Okay, oh my gosh, what's going to happen now, right? Um, and then obviously the overwhelming conclusion, right? I've just told you, altcoins outside of the top 10, by far, they're the life-changing gains, okay? Those hot, sexy, juicy altcoins. Uh, super speculative, super risky, but yeah, they fly. That's it. They fly. And, you know, after the Bitcoin halvening, it was like very clear the small cap altcoins gave you the biggest life-changing gains, okay? So the thing, though, is the odds of picking the unicorn winner in a large cap. So remember, in the, even in the top 100, friends, so actually I'll show you the top 100 right now. The odds of you picking the coin out of this top 100 that is going to overperform the average, it's only like 10%, right? And good luck even picking the big one. I mean, look how hard it was already, right? At the top 500 coins, it was only Soylana, Injective, and Floki that did these hop, top monstrous returns. Only those three. That, those are the winners, right? Uh, BNB was very, very strong, right? It went back to the top, but BNB didn't drop like too much in the first place. You see? But, you know, I guess it did, did good. Did good enough, right? But... It's like, why wow, like a three X back to the top, but it's still good. Okay. But just telling you how even throw a BNB in there. Okay. Still, you can throw 10 other coins in there. 10 out of 500. The odds are really low, man. They're really, really low. All right. Um, so when we look back in the future and the future is going to pass, we look back and we're going to look back. Okay. Uh, what coins to buy right now? We're going to look back at everyone distribution and go, oh, wow. Okay. Out of the top 100 coins. Yeah. It was only like, you know, that certain section top 10, they were the ones that end up running. And like I've told you, right, they might have some key attributes about them. They're new, cycle one coins, like it might be Peppy, it might be Dog with Hat continuing later, who knows, right? That's one thing. They might be new, okay? They might Also, they might be stacked in like a meme coin sector. That's another thing. Uh, it, it might be something like like maybe Chainlink overperforms, but not by too much. Maybe maybe the index only does like, I'm going to show you, might only do like a, a, a 7 or an 8x from here. Maybe Chainlink does like a 16 just because it has real world assets accompanied to it. And that's a cycle one narrative. So Chainlink is an Oracle, it's old stuff. It's now cycle two. It's still okay, but it's not brand new, but it's also encompassing real world assets. So there's a chance that that's also part of the package and it boosts it up. Almost like what happened with Doge. So remember Doge was a meme coin, but not there's no meme coin category for all this time and just sat in a range until 2020. 2020 uh, halvening happens and then Elon Musk shills it in 2021 and now Doge reprices higher, 500x, right? So you never know. That might happen to Chainlink as well, something like that. But I wouldn't, don't bet the whole farm on it. You know what I mean? And obviously that's 500x. So it's, or at least a 100x in Doge. You know, we'll be lucky to get 16x in Chainlink or whatever. Okay. So um, your odds, right? You can see they're very, very low. Also, let's just enjoy this Peppy in this adventure game as well. So what do we do to repeat the 2016 and 2020 success? What do we actually do? Well, as a clear cut summary, if you were to identify the big opportunity today in the same way that you were looking in the landscape in 2020 and 2016, okay? So four years and then eight years ago, all right? You basically, you have a hyper laser eye focus on anything with 60 million market cap or less, all right? 60 million market cap or less, I've written it here, okay? It's anything under 60 million market cap. Now, technically, it's meant to be 100 million, technically, because the industry's grown bigger, all right? And 60 million was a cutoff in the last cycle. But uh, I don't trust it. I just don't trust it. There's a lot of coins. There's just a lot. You know what I mean? So, but you, you get you get an idea, all right? You pretty much like think about the filter. Like, uh, if you're buying anything at one billion market cap or more, yeah, your your returns, the odds that you're going to be in the unicorn win are very low, five to ten percent, right? And then like ninety percent just going to have garbage five x returns. 
average 5x, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10-ish, but then it's going to drop and do that final minus 70% at the end, and it might be the end, okay? So the diminishing gains of this industry, friends, they are very, very apparent, all right? And most altcoins from today, if you look at that total index, they're only going to do about an 8x. So where did that 8 come from? Remember, we look at the total index here. Where we are today is around 2 trillion. You see, this is 2 trillion. Okay, if we're going up to 12 trillion, okay, well, we don't even know we're going to go up there. We're lucky to go up there. That 12 trillion, okay, yeah, that's a 6x, but that includes Ethereum and Bitcoin. So if I've just given you a nice, juicy excess multiplier on your altcoins, right? So that's pretty much where that number, where that number comes from. And look, I'm just going to be honest with you, man. 12 trillion market cap for crypto is, is a bullish bull scenario. Right, not conservative, not medium, like that's Super Bowl. It's a Super Bowl. It breaks it the diminishing uh, return curse of crypto. It's you you return the same amount from the high as the previous cycle. Okay, which it's never done before. It's always slowed down. Right. Um so you get to see it right now. Going off that last cycle, right? The, the, the facts, it's very, very obvious, the evidence, right? If you are in powerful, smaller altcoins, uh, you got a big, fat, juicy multiplier on top of the large caps, okay? And specifically, it refers to Ethereum. That's one thing, okay? So Ethereum is big daddy, pretty much, when it comes to the altcoins. It's a real representation of risk on in the crypto industry, okay? Some people are saying it's Solana now. It is what it is, okay? Now, um... The pump number multiplier you got on that large cap SP was like a 5 to a 10x. So what actually ended up happening was um, Ethereum itself did a 10x from the halvening part. So it went from 400 bucks to around 4 grand, 4, 5 grand. That's a 10 banger, 10. The small altcoins, so if, you're, if you were looking at 60 million market cap or less, those coins, now you have to pick the right ones, right? Like Matic and Sand and whatever, but you didn't get a 10X like Ethereum. You got uh, anywhere from, you got from like a 50 to like a 500X. You got a huge fat multiplier, all right? A big boost to it. But of course, you got to be in the winning ones. You got to be, you got to choose the winning ones as well, okay? So as that clean summary, right? As a clean, you want a clean, clean summary? I have it here, right? If most large cap altcoins are only going to give 8x from today, then your small cap winners can give you a whopping 40x to 80x, all right? So remember, I'm just assuming another diminishing factor. I'm assuming that, uh, you know, you, you can believe, oh, like, please, please just believe what you want, but just don't believe anyone who tells you, oh, well, we're going to break the diminishing cycle, this one. It's going to be great. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You really, like, the same people have been saying they've been getting everything wrong. You know what I mean? I mean, look, you're free. It's a free country. It's a free world. Go believe them. Okay, you're just going to come crying later. Okay, so th that's the number right now. So if those large cap people, basically, the they're basically holding dead weight. They think, see, it's, I've just been a clear example. Like XRP, uh, Litecoin, there's a lot of coins out there. There's big caps as well. Like, they all think, like, bro, you're not, you're not getting your 50X. That's it. Okay. XRP, you're not going to 25 bucks, okay? That would give you uh, 1.2 trillion market. I don't think that's happening. See what I mean? So that's that's pretty much what I'm talking to you about. So, But what is going to give you the 50X? Well, the small cap altcoins. That's what we have to pick. Okay, maybe mean coin sectors, anything that you consider is cheap, okay? A lot of it's random. Um, And yeah, they, these numbers, they only come to big believers. That's it. Believers of the industry, and yeah, it is what it is. Okay, now obviously we're hoping the information asymmetry works in our favor with Pulse Chain because if Richard Hart, you know, gets the Ethereum rotation in, all the meme coins and altcoins on Pulse Chain uh, go absolutely ballistic moonshot in the same way Soilana did. Okay, but it could happen on any chain. It could happen all across. You don't know. You don't know. But I tell you right now, cheap is cheap. All right, cheap is cheap, and things will fly the smaller they are. But there's a lot of small stuff. That's why you're looking for memes that are sticky, memes that are funny, uh, memes that, you know, a lot of material is out there again. So as, 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 as soon as green candles come and they start flushing everything, okay, yeah, you have that opportunity of just 
all the material starts getting pumped out. It spreads the network effect of the meme, right? Dick with bar, you have Donald Trump, the H- HOA, hex orange address, you have na na na. Uh, you have Pika, of course, Pika on Pulse Chain, right? You're also going to have Mr. B-Roots, right? He's going to be talking about Teddy Bear, Pete Iotropa over and over and over again, right? As things heat up. <clears throat> so that's how you got to be thinking your mindset as well. Harry Potter, Obama, they're probably still going to be strong community. There's so many, so many others, okay? You get to see these. These are like the, we can see them now. We can see them. But there might be new ones as well. But we'll see. It, it's tough, friends, because um, the thing is, a lot of like the KOLs and influencers and everyone out there, They've already been given a lot of tokens and they've already put their feet in. Okay. So they have the megaphone now. So it's like you and I are forced to pay attention to meme coins because they're going to pay attention to meme coins. Because what's the chances of them shilling an entirely new thing all the time? They've already been given their stash. You see? So they have to get a bigger bribe later on in the bull market when there's like less believers coming in. It. I hope that makes sense. Where you, you basically they've already been booked. You basically, it's kind of like it's like a schedule. Kind of like, there's like a schedule for shitcoin shilling. Like oh, okay, whatever you're gonna talk about in 2025, you already have the coins today. This is like on average all the other KOLs. It's sticky in their mind already. They're not gonna like necessarily just like rush to the new, whole new thing instantly. Okay, although they can, you can't trust them. But what's the chances? Right, they have to keep receiving payments everywhere. And think about the people making those coins, like. Another way to think about it is, what are the chances somebody enters crypto in 2025 next year and is able to make a more powerful, bigger community than the memes and altcoins we have today? Okay. Now, of course, it will happen, but the the odds of them happening, it's smaller and smaller. The chance of it happening is lower. Why? Because chances are somebody entering next year, okay, if they were thinking of it, they're probably doing it today already. They're already here. All right, because the the rate of people in the world who are like bringing into crypto, it's slowing down. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It makes sense when you think about it like that. You go, well, you know, uh, I think, you know, there's still always going to be growth, but most of the people who are going to be in the circus, they're not waiting to next year to come launch their new brand new thing. You know, they're throwing all that stuff out here. Okay, greed can't wait. But it's still going to happen. There will still be like these, you know, there's odd events and stuff happening. Look like what happened at Safe Moon, okay? All the guys at Safe Moon, they weren't around in 2020. You see what I mean? So it still happened, but they're the one that's anchoring to the unicorn in our mind already, all right? Now, as you get to see, right, in all these assumptions, most importantly, right, I'll play some nice once again. We really have to appreciate it, friends. That's all we have, man, the Pokemon music. <laughs> We're just, just me and you, best friends, all right? We've made some assumptions, right? The uh, the crypto industry growing to 10 to 12 trillion. That's our journey. We're on two now. Uh, four year cycles repeating. The returns are diminishing. And it's true, man. Like only the believers are going to make it. Okay. So you're going to see these numbers. You go like, yeah, if it's just a rough, rough number. Okay. Large caps, you're getting five to 10x. That's it. Yeah. Let's just throw the number seven. You're getting a seven X in your large caps. That's it. Okay. All right. If you're in a small cap shitters, you're going to get... 50x all right you're gonna get 50x you get a multiplier on them okay but there's there's more of the shitters so there's more to choose from so your your risk of ruin is also bigger that's why it's why it helps to have a big packet of them and they probably as well it they'll probably take turns moving up and stuff around here and there all right um that's pretty that's the world we live in friends with diminishing gains and everything coming out here and of course like i said there's information asymmetry maybe pulse chain works out where you're not limited to that 7x right Remember that the entire pulse chain, crypt, uh, pulse chain ecosystem, like it's down to a shocking like 1.5 billion, okay, for the whole thing. So obviously, if it just does a 7x from here, you're only at 10 billion. Hex itself hit 45. You know, that's like, that seems extreme, too extremely low for me. But uh, thinking about today though, right, if if pulse chain, so that's adding pulse, pulse X, E hex and PX, you add all of them up, if it got to Hex's top in September 2021, the market cap, you do a 30x from today. So just think about that number. 30x from today. That's how low we are, by the way, as well. So you didn't even grow on top of 2021. You just got back there. That's a 30x. Say, the, friends, even if you don't get there, let's say you only get a 20x from here. Like, even at just a 20x, okay? I just want to let you know. 
By the way, the meme coins and altcoins on on uh, Pulse, because remember, meme coins are just altcoins that go up, peeps, okay? Uh, they'll fly hard. They'll fly mega, mega hard. Of course they will, all right? Because you can really see it, the, the observation of what happened uh, months ago when Pulse Chain started going up. Now, if you got like a 20, you've killed it compared to the rest of the industry. They're going to be getting a five, friends, five, six, seven, okay? And 20 will look like a failure because they're like, oh my gosh, we didn't even break the high, right? So I'm obviously I'm praying we are on some sort of unicorn revival, Phoenix resurrection. Richard Hart's got the 1.2 billion when Ethereum is you know 170 uh, seven dollars plus and figures are some way rotated in, which is already uh, demonstrated. Yeah, that might be it, friends. It could be that, but don't bank on it. Okay, I'm hoping. Obviously, I pray in my heart. Hey, wouldn't it be nice if we got the old season and we were one of those unicorn winners? You know, that would be great. It would be it would be a very entertaining and beautiful outcome if that happened. Just don't rely on it, okay? And if you're dealing in unicorn numbers, yeah, the numbers can be very, very big. But you know, just, just think about this. I mean, like, if you're outside 30x from here, let's say Pulse itself is up up 30x from today from here. Uh, it's a long way down, man. It's not just a long way down with price. It's a long way down with time, all right? And 30x, like, if we did a 30x from today, remember, because we're taking that Bitcoin halvening date start. Uh, yeah, maybe you know, 20, 30x, a lot of people will say it's trash. But like I said, you are crushing the index. The index is only going to do like a five or six. Okay, I'm hoping it's on the upside, but we'll see what happens. So now you have a full scope of the picture of the numbers everyone's dealing with. And of course, you, you go back to every single cycle. Common theme. Why did people keep holding? It's because they were anchoring to the previous cycle. Okay. So, like, you know, just quickly, just to show you, uh, you go back here, right? Friends, in, in 2016 cycle, right, why did that, why were people still holding up here? Why? It's because in the 2012 cycle, Bitcoin did 1,000x. That's why. 1,000x. Okay. So, you're not getting out of 300. Why the hell would you get out of 300? And that was the top. Just to give you an idea of the returns. It's not that specific numbers, but you get the point. Because they anchored to the thousand next. So that 300, they're like, oh, it's going to do the same thing. No, it's not. It diminished. Okay, but then step forward again. What happened here? What happened in 2020? As you can imagine, why wasn't nobody selling here? You go, well, look, we grew 326x last time. Up here, we're only up 25x. You're like, at least get to 100x growth. Nope. That was the top. So once again, they anchored to the past again. Humans, we always have, we do this big, big, big mistake when it comes to investing. We keep thinking the, the, the path is linear all the time. We go, okay, we did like, we did 300x last time. This one's going to be another 300x. No, nope. it wasn't even a 100x, just a 25. Okay, so that's why you can see, now I'm trying to see the trap forming up here. Why will people hold up here, friends? It'll be the same thing. Well, this one's a 25 Maybe, I don't know, maybe up here, maybe people are up literally an 8x, right? Maybe it's just an 8, and you're going to ask people, why are you still holding today? Go, haven't moved, man. We haven't moved at all. I've been waiting all these years. The last one was a 25x. I should get a 25x again. And then it stops at 8, drops 70% again. Now you're down to just a freaking 2 or 3x from today. So you can see how in each cycle, you just get these big vacuum people who end up getting trapped. But we're not going to get trapped. Because you like and subscribe, highest value content in crypto, and it's not even close. Catch you in the next one.